Amen. Very quickly, open your Bible with me to the book of Luke and chapter number 22. We'll read verse 35 and 36. But before then, I think it's good for us to read our texts. Uh, this weekend, we've been talking about um, new wine, a new wineskin. And so let's read our text first of all in the book of Mark and chapter number 2. Mark chapter number 2. Mark 2, I will read verses 18 and I'll stop at verse 22. Mark chapter 2, 18 to 22. I bring you greetings from the Director of Finances, Kitchen Affairs and General Wellbeing of the Olawale family. Her name is Bola Olawale and that's my wife. She sends her regards. Amen. Hallelujah. Our job is to keep her happy for our own good. <laughs> Amen. She's prayed for you and she sends her regards. And the disciples of John, okay, I have it up here. Now, John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. And the people came and said to him, why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Keep it going, sir. And Jesus said to them, can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The day will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and they will fast in that day. 21. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth, well, another version says um, a new garment, on an old garment. If he does, the patch tears away from it, the new from the old, and a wash tear is made. Verse 22. No one puts new wine into old wine skin if he does the wine will bust the skin now please take note it is the new that does the damage please take note of that scripture the bible did not say the old will tear the new it is the new that will tear the old it is the new wine that will bust the wine old wine skin it's not the old wine skin that will um that will destroy or make un unusable the new wine do you understand? So it is actually the new that does the damage. Stay with me. And the Bible says, and the new wine is destroyed. And so are the skins. But the new wine is for fresh wine skin. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy words. And brethren, asking God for what you are not prepared for could be very dangerous. Could be very, very dangerous. The children of Israel wanted liberty. They wanted to be free from Egypt. And God was ready to set them free. Now, it took them 400 years, according to scripture. And eventually, God says, it's now time. But even when it was time, brethren, God still had to do a whole lot of work. A whole lot of work. Um, they were free at the time from Egypt. But they were not, they were delivered as it were, but they were not free. In other words, um, every of their affinity, every of their, um, everything they wanted was still of the old. The Bible says at some point in time, can you imagine after men had, were, had eaten the food of angels, they were asking for, um, to eat leek, garlic and onions as they did in Egypt. There's something about where you are coming from that doesn't want to leave you. There's something about where you are that seems to be um, a settlement as it were, a bus stop. And if something deliberate is not done, you are simply told God, God is okay for you to leave me here. And brethren, God wants us to get better. Everything that God created, ladies and gentlemen, that is a living being, God gave the ability for growth. There is spiritual growth. There is financial growth. There is ministerial growth. There is relationship growth or growth in relationship or relational growth. There is growth in your career. Growth in every form and way. God's desire, for Proverbs 4, 18, the Bible says the path of the just is like unto a light. It shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. It God doesn't give God any delight that you are like him. The same yesterday and today and forever. God doesn't take delight in that. He takes delight because he doesn't live in time. So he has to be a constant. But as long as you are in time, you must keep increasing. And you must keep getting better. Hallelujah. And so Jesus, they came to Jesus and said, well, John the Baptist's uh, disciples, they fast. How come your guys don't fast? And Jesus said, they can't fast now because I'm with them. Time will come when I'm gone and it will be time for them to fast. Because the truth is this, you cannot put old and new together. It will not work. 
I sincerely want to give you the new. I want to make you a better husband. I want to bless you financially. But you see, I cannot bless you financially if you are still struggling with greed. That's a dangerous proposition. That I will put so much divine resources, mark my words, divine resources, into a man who is so self-centered and everything about the kingdom is not his business. That's a dangerous proposition. God will be helping you to destroy yourself. I cannot give the anointing or pour so much power and authority upon a man who finds it hard to forgive. He, the first person that will die is his wife. And God says, I, though I have all this in stock now, I need you to understand this, brethren. God, God the, when we pray, God, is, God doesn't do it. God, God has done. We are only filling out a requisition to get what we need from the storehouse. There's nothing you are going to need, nothing you are going to want, nothing you are going to desire in life that has not been done. Second Peter 1 3, according as his divine power has given unto us all that pertains to life and godliness. Everything, all, brethren, when the Bible says all, please, all, all. There is nothing you are going to ask that God is trying to do. In fact, that's why the Bible says, the Lord is, a, is my shield. It says, it calls him a present help. In the time of need, not an arriving help. God does not come to show up on the scene. It is the scene that catches up with God. Do you understand? So if he tells you that there is no, no evil or no wickedness can overtake you, he knows what he's saying. God is already speaking about 2050 ahead of you. He knows what will happen. Between here and then, ladies and gentlemen, everything is covered. Covered from the foundations of the earth. And brethren, that understanding changes the way you live your life. Knowing that, brethren, it is not given to any devil to mess with you. Not given to any devil to mess with you. However, for God to walk with you, he needs your permission. For Satan to afflict you, he needs your permission also. And brethren, the difference between the old skin of the Old Testament and the new skin of the New Testament is this. In the Old Testament, anytime you see God do something, or anytime you see a great thing happen, it was God at work. You see great things in the Old Testament, God made it happen. But brethren, the New Testament is interesting. Anytime you see great things happen in the New Testament, brethren, saints made it happen. Let me explain myself. Do you hear what I just said? In the Old Testament, if you see great things happen, who made it happen? God. In the New Testament, if you see great things happen, saints, you and I, made it happen. Now the difference is this. In the Old Testament, God wasn't living in men. And please, stop calling yourself a representative of God. You are not, you will never be a representative of God. In the Old Testament, yeah, they were representatives. Why? My, you're a lawyer. You can only represent someone who is not present. Or someone who is present and can't articulate him or herself. So if God is inside of you, why are you representing someone that is present? You cannot represent someone who is present. Where Christ in me, the hope of glory. Totality of God inside of this person. My help is not from the hills, ladies and gentlemen. It's right here. And that's why you are not a representative of God. You are a vessel for expression. What did I say you are? A vessel of expression. In other words, brethren, if blind eyes saw, and it took God to make blind eyes, rather, to the lame to walk and the dead to rise. Brethren, in the New Testament, it is up to you. All God is looking for is vessels by which he can express himself. And so in the Old Testament, brethren, if they had their will, it didn't matter to God. Because God did not need their will to do anything. But brethren, in the New Testament, for God to walk, he needs you to want him to walk. So if you don't want to change, brethren, God will not duress you to change. Truth, he will not duress you to prosper. He will, not, he will only tell you what it takes. And tell you, well, everything you need to be who you want to be. Who he wants you to be is right inside of you. Please, my brother, my brother, can you come? Can, can I have more of this brother while he's with me? No, he is a person. 
is not fleet or fire. He is a person. Now, this person lives inside of me. What you call more of him is me now allowing him express himself much more. God is a total, totality. So he's in you, living in you, with you, doing all things and every capacity you see in anybody God is using is inside of you. The extent to which you allow him free expression is the extent to which he can manifest himself. Thank you, sir. The new could be very dangerous. And thank God, ladies and brethren, that God, sometimes when he hears us, he tells us, you are not ready for this. I have heard you. It is, in fact, it's been made available before you were born, but you can't have it yet. I remember a story in the book of John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have a lot of things to tell you, but you can't bear them now. All these things I have to tell you, they are treasures for you, but you cannot bear them now. And God is saying, I have a lot of blessings to bless you, but you cannot bear them now. Can you imagine giving a lot of resources into the hands of somebody who wants to show all the people that did not help him when he was young? He wants to show them Pepe. And so if you are not getting better than where you are, don't blame the devil. Don't blame God either. Check yourself. Let me say this. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to help me coin it in the right way. God does not really decide where he shows up. He has decided it. It is written in the scripture. Wherever the sacrifice and the condition he wrote in scripture prevails, he must show up. I'll give you a typical example. Jesus told his disciples, stay in Jerusalem, instruction, and wait here. So their own job is stay, wait, not in Antioch. Don't go to Jericho. It has to be Jerusalem. And while they were waiting, the Bible says, one day, suddenly, while they were in one accord, the Holy Spirit showed up. Luke 22, I have very short time. Luke 22, please. Verse number 35 and 36. Luke 22, 35 and 36. Are we still together? Tell your, tell your brother next to you, well, okay, we can't talk. But you can mumble under your skull, you know your mask. <laughs> uh, tell your neighbor, greatness resides inside of you. Yeah. It's right inside of us. Right inside. The Bible says, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. He said to them, when I sent you with no money bag and knapsack and sandals, did you lack anything? They said nothing. Next verse, the last one. And he said to them, but now let the one who has a purse, a money bag, take it. And likewise, a knapsack. And let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. Now, this scripture is very, very interesting. Because in, in Luke chapter number 9, verse 3, Jesus had called his 12 disciples. And I told them, he says, well, I'm sending you out to go and preach. He says, as you go, don't take any money bag. Don't have a purse. Don't have a knapsack. Just go. The laborer is worthy of his wages. At another time, he sent out in chapter number 10, he sent out 70 disciples. And he told them in verse number 4, he says, as you go, don't have a purse. Don't even have money. The laborer is worthy of his wages. So Jesus was now about to die. Please stay with me. He was now about to die. He calls the disciples and said, well, last time I sent you out and I told you, um, don't go with a purse. Don't have a knapsack. Just go the way you are. Did you lack anything? And they all said, no, sir. We had food to eat. We had shelter. Every supply was met. Every need rather was met. And Jesus said, fine. Now that I'm about to die. Now the, that the bridegroom is about to go away. Now that the news is about to show up. Um, I am now giving you an instruction. Those who don't have a purse, go and get one. If you don't have a knapsack, go and get one. 
You know before I told you that the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. Now go and get a sword. What changed? What changed? Brethren, Jesus was establishing a new order. And this new order cannot be married with the old. We are going to have a tear. Everything before then, Jesus was supplying. What they wish Jesus was supplying. Even tax money. Jesus had to use ATM from the sea. Even tax money. Everything. Where they will sleep. Even where they will have the last supper. Jesus was the one. Go and meet a man. Everything was perfected by the master. But now that I'm leaving. And you are not going to see me physically anymore. Now I am with you. But the situation is about to change. Now I am going to be in you. So what I used to... Let, please, my uncle, let me use you to explain this. I hope you don't mind. Where's your wife? I've taken permission, huh? Now, please, this is it. So Jesus, this is Jesus. All right? That's why he's bigger than me. <laughs> so here is Jesus. I'm one of the disciples. Call me Peter. So I'm reckless. So I come and say, Jesus says, well, go out. You don't need any, everything we needed for the three and a half years of ministry. Who made it happen? Jesus. Jesus did not need their income from fishing. In fact, he told them to abandon fishing. Follow me. How are we going to eat? Don't worry. At another time, he sent them out. And he says, don't, don't hold anything up. Same modus operandi. All your supplies, I will meet. You go. And brethren, he asked them, when I told you to go at that time, did you lack anything? They said, no. Now I said, from now on, now that I'm no longer going to be physically with you, everything I used to give you, physically, I am now going to make available inside of you. You are now the one that will determine how much of it can be expressed. Do you understand? So the same money I used to give you while you went on mission is still available. My hand has not changed. My supply is still the same. Everything I made happen while I was here physically, I can still make happen. But now the difference is this. While I was out of you, I had my will, you had your will. Now that I'm going to be inside of you, I am subject to your will. <laughs> Can I take that again? This is very, very key for our life. While I was here, Jesus can decide, well, today we are not going this way. In fact, when we were about to preach, he told them, don't go to any city that is not Jewish. Only go to the lost of the house of Israel. All right? Follow the instruction. At another time, <laughs> when he was to be arrested, Peter brought out a sword. He had his own will. But Jesus now says, you know what? I could decide what I wanted when I was with you. But now that I'm going to be in you, I will be subject to the owner of, or the controller, not owner, he's still the owner, the controller of this physiology, whose spirit I'll be dwelling in. And so your mind is going to determine how much I can do. Your own decisions, what you decide, how you decide, when you decide, will determine everything I could do when I was here physically, I can still do. But now it's subject to, subject to you, sir. Thank you, sir. That's why we pray, Lord, have your way. Have your way means, Lord, I'm choosing to lose control in this area. It's a choice. I choose to lose. Thank you so much, sir. I choose to lose control. So Jesus was telling them, simple. Two things or three things I'll leave you with. Number one, when he told them not to pick any bag, he wasn't telling them to start uh, being responsible for themselves. No. He was now saying, be responsible to me. 
before I was responsible for you. Now I need you to be responsible to me. Number two, he's also selling them, which means every man in this house, every woman in this house, all God is calling us to do is this. Responsible to me simply means what I will give you is for you, is still mine, and I'm trusting you with it. Let me use an aircraft to explain this. I'm sensing my heart, we're not getting it, getting it fully yet. When Jesus was here physically, the aircraft belongs to God. So he was flying it. He had you seated by the side as a co-pilot. But he was the captain. Now, what happened when he died and resurrected was this. He moved off the captain's seat. Put you in the captain's seat. Now, he takes a seat inside of you. So there is the owner of the ship inside of the captain. So if you don't ask him questions, he doesn't answer. Because now, who flies, the, who flies the aircraft? You. But who is the owner of the aircraft? It's still Jesus, not you. So he's the owner of your life. However, he can help you navigate every ability he has. Skill he has in, 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 in flying through the storm. Going through the tides. Attaining altitude. If all that ability is still inside of you in his person. Living in you. But you don't ask him questions. You don't bring him into the discussion. Like we take discussion, we take decisions in the family. We don't pray. We don't ask Jesus what, how. Lord, okay, we need help here. Uh, we, we just need, want to do what you want us to do. Oh, no. God says, that's old. You got to let it go. So he said, you will still not be one. See, just have a knapsack. He didn't say they should carry money. <laughs> right? The money is still available. But you have to fill out a requisition. And that's why prayer is very important. Ask, you receive. And brother, I don't know what's going on these days. A lot of believers are becoming very, 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 very lazy in the place of prayer. And it's dangerous. If the devil wants to destroy you, he stops you from praying. Because what's pray, pray, what prayer simply is this. You giving God permission to do to you what he has already promised to do. And I told you, for him to walk with you, he needs your permission. Salvation, I mentioned that yesterday. Salvation does not give God ownership control of your life. He owns it. But the control is to yours until you let it go. Let's wrap up by Luke, reading Luke chapter number 11. Luke 11. Give me, that should be verse number 9. Luke 11, 9 to 11. I tell you, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek, you, you find. Knock and it will be open. Keep going, please. For everyone who asks receives... And everyone who seeks find, keep going, please. Now, please, this is where the rubber meets the road. The Bible says, what father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Keep going, sir. The Bible says, for if he asks for an egg, he will give him a scorpion. Verse 13. If you then are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Don't forget, emphasis here on children. So it is a child that asks for um, bread and father will not give him stone. It is a child that asks for egg and father will not give him serpent. Alright? Now, there's nothing wrong with the stone. There's nothing wrong with stone. Don't forget, what does the child ask for? Bread. But there's nothing wrong with a stone. The only problem is that stones are not for kids. Stones are not for kids. When Jesus was to be tempted, what did the devil tell him the first temptation? Turn this stone into, in other words, convert eternity into temporality. 
In other words, um, rather than spirituality, can you can your walk with God be all about your need? And rather than service, can all the only thing that this relationship with God is all about is how he keeps you, how he protects you, no evil around your family, and nothing else. That's for kids. Now, stone is good because stone, and the Bible says Jesus refused. I'm not going to sell this eternal glory for a temporary help, as it were. In other words, this relationship is more than my needs, is more than my wants, is more than what God gives. Is about being who God wants me to be. And what does he want us to be? Him. Having the grace and ability to love those we should hate. Blessing and making sure you pay the school fees of those who wanted to destroy your life when you were young. That's the gospel of Jesus, brother. Feeding your enemies. If the new meets us at this level, it will be dangerous. There will be a tear. So God is saying, let children become men. It's time to grow. Let those who have rights, let go of their rights. You can't be, don't be right all the time. Even when you are right, be meek. And just for the sake of peace and what Jesus will want, let there, let there be peace. You cannot use a bread to kill Goliath, sir. <laughs> and that's why children can't take territory. God cannot trust spiritual children, as it were. When I mean children, I'm talking of people who have refused to grow spiritually. Now, growth is not fasting and prayer. Growth is ability to not have the will and Jesus to control you all together. Submission is spiritual growth. God says, I don't need you to use that money for this. It is for this. Yes, sir. Your wife offended you. Get up. Go tell her you're sorry. Lord, I'm going to lose my authority in this house. Who gave you the authority in the first place? That is what it means to be like Jesus. Can we stand to pray? My time is up. You know, it's possible for you to have been around God for a long time and you don't have a relationship with him. This gospel of Jesus is simple. Brother, if you come to the realization of what Jesus is saying this morning, God can use anybody and everybody to open blind eyes. Kids, 8-year-old, 10-year-old, 12-year-old, God is using them to heal sicknesses, diseases. And brethren, it is not a big deal for God to raise the dead. Our society doesn't need too much of words. We have folks who are gifted to talk, but our society lacks power. Men have not seen what medicine can handle. Stage 4 cancer, those condemned to death. None of them staying alive because there's just no authority to keep them alive beyond what science says. And brethren, that if, if we're going to birth change, how God anointed Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth rather, with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about, God, God wants to use you to set your family free. If there's still anyone bound in this in your family, sir, and you are, you are saved, you are born again, we hold you responsible. Darkness can't fix darkness. It's only light that is an antidote to darkness. And brethren, we don't argue with darkness, we just switch on the light. The endless expectation of the creature, brethren, has been waiting for a manifestation. It's time for boys to become men. 
It's time for kids who only ask for bread and everything about life is about bread to begin to handle stones. When God cuts covenants, the law was not written on the bread. It was written on stone. Jesus said in Matthew 21, from verse number 41, he says, as it is written, the stones that the builders have rejected have become the head of the corner. When he submitted in verse 44, he says, I am the stumbling stone, the rock of offense. Whoever stumbles against me is broken to pieces. When I lift up from where I am and I roll against anybody, they are grounded to powder. That's the God you carry. Brother, this power is real. It's not stories. And it's not for five foot office. These signs will follow them. All believers. Brother, it's time for us to move away. You want greatness. God can't trust you with it yet. Because there are still some places we have to walk away from. We have to move away from the station of self-centeredness and greed. So that it can give us the supply. And we know, can trust us to um, deploy them to where they are needed. Where he wants them. I will ask you to just ask the Lord. Talk to God. Prayer is not generic. Could you just talk to God based on how you've been impacted by this? What he's telling us this morning. If you are sincere for more. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is here this morning. God was speaking while in the place of prayer. Says there is a there is there is, there, there is a man here, or rather, there's someone here. You are your siblings. You guys don't talk. You don't agree now, and it's been going on and on and on. God says He wants to break that um, hold, bring you back together, so that you become a family again, because some situations are coming ahead where you're going to need each other. And brethren, if you can let go of your own pride, because I don't know whether you are the one that is offended. I don't, this, are, this is just my own assumption and not part of the detail. And you are, you are struggling with a lot of things. So you feel it's okay to just stay away from everybody or everybody staying away from you. or Nobody is talking to you and the other person. And God says he wants, to bring, he wants to help you this morning. Reconcile the matter. You will, it will be, it will be only, only Jesus could have done it. And it's done already. But I need you to forgive. I need you to let go. I need you to want it and say, look, we embrace your will and purpose. Hallelujah. And God was also talking about the second person. He says, you just have a problem rejoicing for people when things happen to them. That you're actually always angry or you're, you're, you're unhappy when things happen to people and you don't know why. You don't want it, but it happens. So there's always this streak of jealousy and envy when some good thing happens to someone else and, and, and not to you. If it's you, it's okay. But uh, you don't want it and you've been crying. <laughs> oh, God, God says he can help you today. And he's going to help you today if you want him to. Can we talk to God? You know the area you need to surrender? Can you say, Lord, all right, Lord, I, I, my time is up. I, I give up. Could you have, have this? I'm, I'm struggling in this area. I surrender it to you. Talk to God yourself, please. You're not, you're not waiting for my prayer. It is you talking to God. It's right instead of you. Same anointing is on you. Same spirit of grace is on you. Is it okay for you to pray that whatever it's in you that is not allowing the full expression of God? Whatever clog is in that has clogged the pipe and is not allowing the free flow of God's counsel, God's will, God's purpose, God's desire, God's lifestyle through you, that the Lord God Almighty will make you a thoroughfare today. Can you pray? Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Please, you're here and you know you've, you don't have Jesus as Lord and Savior. Oh, you say, bro, PK, I'm saved, but I'm not in a good place. I'm, I'm actually struggling in my relationship with God. And I really need to get back. COVID has done some damage. You can't deny that. 
But brethren, it could have happened to anyone. Just having the right people around you sometimes makes a difference between what you can become and what you are. I want to pray with you. The Bible says, Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron, so does a man sharpen the countenance of his friend. It says in verse number 19, as in water, face answers to face, so does the heart of a man to a man. And that's one of the uh, essence of the fivefold office. That God could use grace and extend grace. Just sometimes, it's, it's, what do you call it now? Um, is a jumping, is a jumper cable, just to kickstart your battery again. And you want to say, if I, I, I really need help with that. Just raise up your hand where you are. I want to pray with you, very, very quickly. Every eye closed, please. Let's, let's. If, if you know, Pastor, I, 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 my relationship, I know where I should be with Jesus at all, and I need help to get back to where I am. Please raise up your hand where you are. I want to pray with you, and that'll be it. <laughs> It's, it's you. It's God is trying to help now. So just raise your hand where you are, and I will pray. God bless you. Just raise your hand very quickly. God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, in holy surrender, we lift up these hands. And Father, Lord, in acknowledgement of the need for help, your help, and Holy Spirit, I ask for a tearing through of walls, Lord God Almighty, I pray in the name of Jesus, a breaking down of every form of limitation and hindrance. Father, I pray and I demand. The Bible says you pour upon us clean water and we shall be clean. I ask God Almighty for a release of water upon every life and every hand raised tonight, this morning. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, newness of glory and beauty comes over you. In the name of Jesus Christ, come alive. Let the feeble knees become strong. Your prayer altar, we ignite you with fresh fire. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we pray for all the men in this house. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That Lord, your agenda and your purpose for the male gender. Your agenda and your purpose for each person called a man in this house. Be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. We pray, God Almighty, every weight that does not allow us to run this race, every weight that does not allow us to be good husbands to our wives, every, every weight that does not allow us to be responsible fathers, such weights lifted off this morning in the name of Jesus. We receive grace to be who you want us to be. Prosper us. Use us for your glory. Lord, don't allow our responsibility to make us look irresponsible. In Jesus' name. God bless you.